This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. Today on CityCast Philly. Earlier this week, we talked about how to find the perfect rental in the city. But today, I'm speaking with a housing reporter about a nationally praised program created during the pandemic to keep tenants in their homes. It's known as the Eviction Diversion Program. And last week, City Council took a huge step forward towards making it permanent. But what's the likelihood that Mayor Sherelle Parker will sign this bill? It's Thursday, June 6th. I'm Trini Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Aaron Moselle, housing reporter for WHYY's Plan Philly. Glad to have you back on the show. Yeah, great to be here, Trina. Aaron, like I mentioned in the intro of this episode, the eviction diversion program was huge in the city when it rolled out during the pandemic. It was during a time when there was so much upheaval and like a real crisis happening, right? And it was really geared to keep people in their homes. Can you remind us just like what this program is and just how impactful it's been? Yeah, sure. So this program, um, like you said, was uh, launched during the pandemic, specifically in 2020, as a way to keep people in their homes, in their apartments at a time when there was a a lot of financial instability. People were losing their jobs and, um, you know, money was tight for a lot of folks. And so this was a way to try and avoid the city racking up a bunch of evictions at a time when people really literally couldn't afford, um, in some cases, to to pay their rent um, or needed some help to have a payment plan or, 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 or any multitude of situations. It has existed in various forms since 2020, uh, but the goal has always been to try to settle landlord-tenant disputes outside of court. Uh, because even an eviction filing um, can be damaging to a tenant, even if ultimately a judge rules in their favor. Just having that case on their record can uh, raise all kinds of issues when they go to rent their next place. For sure. Um, and so the goal is to try to avoid that if possible. Now, in ev- not in every case was an eviction avoided. I don't want to give that impression. But in the majority of cases, uh, these disputes were and are continuing to be settled outside of court um, through various means. And and that's considered sort of a huge win. And it's a model that's being replicated across the country at this point. And Aaron, how does the program actually work? Yes, um, this was a a program that's been, you know, touted by the White House. It's been heralded um, left and right just for its its overall success. You know, and it's a pretty simple concept. It's just you know, the landlord, the tenant, you know, taking 30 days before an eviction filing to to sit down for mediation to try and see if they can work something out. Sometimes that looks like a payment plan. Sometimes that looks like a graceful exit is what they call it, where Mm. the tenant agrees to leave, but they don't end up with that um, damaging eviction filing that I was talking about. And sometimes things are negotiated without a mediator as well. Um, There's all sorts of shapes and sizes for this program. But the the goal, as I said, ultimately is to try and get things done without heading to court, which can be, you know, costly and timely for both sides, honestly. Right. So there's been several temporary extensions of this program, right? And city council voted 16 to 1 on Thursday to approve legislation making the eviction diversion program permanent. What's the likelihood that Mayor Sherelle Parker will sign the bill, though? Yeah, I, I, the Parker administration is, is certainly supportive of extending this program. Um, the issue is that the program has proven not to work very well unless there is some kind of rental assistance. Um, and for the past couple of years, there's been some rental assistance for this new program that the city launched. There is um, some money that will be there going forward, but the Parker administration's first budget proposal does not include 
money from the general fund um, going forward. And so there is a city council push at this point for a total of $100 million over the next two years, so $50 million each year, because it has proven that without rental assistance, um, you know, this program is just not as effective, you know, and the program right now allows for uh, landlords to recoup, I think, three or four thousand dollars. And obviously, sometimes people owe more, but sometimes you know, something can be forgiven or it goes a long way, basically, when it comes down to it, to, to keeping tenants in, in their apartments and out of court. Interesting. So we might soon see some negotiations here to figure out where to get this funding from. Exactly. It'll have to be done as part of the budget negotiations, mm-hmm. which are coming down to the wire at this point. I mean, the budget has to be passed um, before the end of this month. And council, I believe their final session of council is on the 13th. So, you know, we will see fairly in fairly short order whether or not this money is there in any kind of means um, for this target financial assistance program, which is directly tied to this eviction diversion program so that there is some funding behind it. More on the future of the eviction diversion program after the break. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. Sign up to The Economist for in-depth curated expert analysis of world events and topics ranging from business and culture to science and technology. You'll get the weekly digital edition, online-only articles, curated newsletters on politics, the markets, science, culture, and China, and full access to The Economist Podcast Plus. The Economist is independent journalism for independent thinking. Go to economist.com and get your first month free. Aaron, what are landlords saying about the eviction diversion program? Are they satisfied with this program? I mean, you just told us that, you know, they get about $3,000. Right. So through this targeted financial assistance program, they can get um, up to, I think, three or $4,000 in, in back rent, which is typically what the dispute has to do with. I mean, at this point, the eviction diversion program can handle any kind of dispute, but the most common and the original goal of the program was to help with with back rent um, that people people were behind on their rent. So it depends which landlord you talk to in terms of whether or not they support this program. Mm-hmm. Some people think it's worked great, um, but in some cases, you know, the landlord just wants to cut that relationship, um, and so they feel like because this is a mandatory program, having to go through this program kind of delays things on their end. And so they they don't love it for that reason. They would prefer in some cases for the program to be voluntary, I guess, in cases where they feel like a resolution can be found outside of court. But in some cases, the landlord sort of knows that the the dispute is just there's not going to be a solution. And this is going to this is headed for court. And so why waste a month sort of going through the motions if you know that's where you're ultimately going to end up? So obviously the tenants are largely supportive. This creates a mechanism that was not there before uh, for them to kind of resolve these issues without, you know, going through the trouble of going to court. So, yeah, I think it's sort of definitely a case by case basis. For sure. And, you know, I'm also curious, is this program enough? Like, have you heard from housing advocates on how they feel like the money that was provided in some of these cases? Was it enough? Again, I think that's a case by case basis. I mean, I think, you know, if you think about what the rents are like in Philadelphia at this point, they're at historic highs, um, know. you know, <laughs> a, a few thousand dollars may in most cases be only a couple of months rent, maybe not even. And so if you're more than a couple of months behind, um, you know, that requires the landlord to forgive some of the rent or come to some other kind of a payment arrangement. I think in a lot of cases, the targeted financial assistance is sort of 
helps guide the conversation so that there is some sort of resolution that can be found because hey look you can get this payment up front and then you know work things out from there without that money the program most advocates say is just untenable it just doesn't really work it's hard to resolve these disputes when there's no money behind it and during the pandemic there was a considerable amount of money from the federal government that was run through the city through this emergency rental assistance program it was very successful not everybody got money who applied but that money was exhausted ultimately and so the city had to come up with a new source of funding the big question now is whether that that funding will continue because um, as far as housing advocates are concerned the eviction diversion program its livelihood depends on on whether or not there's consistent funding right. and, and enough funding, to your point. I know over the years you've spoken to Philly residents who had to, you know, face potential eviction. What have they told you about just how they've dealt with the threat of eviction, with evictions and how this program has helped them? I mean, generally, the the tenants who have testified in council and and who I've spoken to have been eternally grateful for this program. I mean, before this program existed, uh, the only option was to go to court and hope that a judge sided with you and against the landlord. And that required you to take time off of work. And mm. um, if you could try to get some legal representation, which a lot of folks are not able to get, uh, which makes their life harder when you're trying to argue in a case like this. Um, and so by and large, the the feedback has been very positive for renters because without this, they probably would not have been able to stay in their home or at least without a lot of anguish and a lot of hardship. And, and based on sort of the track record of the program and, and the fact that the majority of these cases are able to be resolved without going to court, I think sort of speaks for itself um, and why housing advocates push so hard and why elected officials um, wanted to, you know, make this the law of the land versus something that you have to continually have to renew and, and hope sticks around for a while. All right. That was Aaron Moselle, housing reporter for WHYY's Plan Philly. Aaron, thanks for breaking this down and joining me on CityCast Philly. You got it. Read more of Aaron's reporting on Philly's housing scene by clicking the link in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. Let us know what you think of this episode. Rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with the Friday News Roundup. Bye. Bye.